investing in property is not easy and navigating the legal maze is even more difficult. So if legal issues are stalling your home buying or sale process, get in touch with us. We'll get you answers to all your issues right here on Property Hotline. As you might have guessed by now, today we are answering your queries related to legal hassles that you face while buying, selling or investing in property with our expert for the day, Hemang Jariwala. Hemang is also a High Court Advocate. Welcome to the show, Hemang. Thank you very much. Let's take our first question. I am told Vishwanath is on the phone line and he has a query for us. Vishwanath? Yeah, hi, uh, Vishwanath here. Good evening. Good evening. Tell us what's your question. Okay. Uh, so, like, uh, uh, buying a property in Mumbai is very tough nowadays. And there are a lot of properties in SRA which are getting uh, uh, sold out. Okay. And uh, but there are people who are buying and selling properties in SRA mm -hmm. on basis of like irrevocable power of attorney, civil security affidavit and signing of all the hierarchy. Right. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to know how legal it is for buying a property in under SRA within the locking period of 10 years mm. and what all precaution has to be taken uh, while buying this property and how legal it is buying of this SRA property. Okay. So he wants to know whether it's legal to buy SRA property within a lock-in period, especially on a power of attorney or an affidavit. Correct. If there is a lock-in, then it shouldn't there be legal. There is, correct. Right? So basically understand the very concept of SRA means slum rehabilitation. You know, so the, the very concept of a slum rehabilitation is that the slum is people are given ownership in this redeveloped uh, buildings with a lock-in of 10 years. Mm. So if somebody is buying or if some agent comes to you and says that you can buy this within the lock-in period, it's an illegal thing, it's an unlawful thing, that transaction itself has no sanctity of law or any type of a document which you may be told that a power of attorney or an affidavit or an irrevocable power of attorney will help you in supporting your uh, ownership right. over an SRA property is absolutely wrong. I think it's a uh, there's been a, a high court uh, division bench judgment also wherein the police have been told to take possession and seal such properties where power of attorneys and affidavits were given by the uh, SRA uh, people hmm, hmm. to such type of buyers. So Vishwanath, my advice would be please do not look into this SRA. They come out in the market to be cheaper, but it is absolutely suicidal to put your money into that because it has no force of law. Right, no force of law there and the very fact that there's a lock-in period itself and they're trying to sell during the lock-in period means they are breaking the law somewhere. That should raise a red flag for you. Right, Vishwanath? Yeah, absolutely right. But uh, I just wanted to know one more thing. Mm -hmm. if Quickly. All things, if there's all issues out there, then why are there lawyers? Okay, they go ahead and do all the sales agreements, the affidavits and everything. Why they don't stop all this? Why don't they stop all this? <laughs> See, there are a lot of activities which go on in the property market. Okay, my, my job is to caution you. People are indulging into illegal and lawful activities, but since many are doing it, so you should be doing it is not the advice. Okay, it is an illegal activity, so please keep away from it. Yeah, the short answer is that Vishwanath, this is an illegal activity and you're better off not getting into a transaction like this, right? Uh, we'll need to move on now. Uh, Mangesh has written in. Uh, he sent in a question through email. Uh, he says he bought a flat and his agreement and position letter both say that I, as it, he signed a letter which says I don't want parking. Now this he knows is going against BMC rules. He's asking whether this is right. Also, it's been a year since position, but the builder hasn't formed a society and is now asking for money. Now, uh, he's already paid 60,000 rupees as maintenance charges for a year. Now, despite that, the builder is asking them to pay six months of municipal taxes. Now, his problem here is, Mangesh's problem, that he has the other residents of the society have paid and he's been resisting this and obviously, uh, everybody's pressurizing him. What can he do? Correct. See, there are three issues basically. One is about the car park issue. Suppose you have entered into an agreement with the builder, okay, that you are not uh, wanting a car park, hmm. okay. So then you have to abide by that contract till the time the society is formed. 
Right. Because once the society is formed, right, then as per the provisions of the uh, Cooperative Societies Act 1960, hmm. the land and the building belongs to the society hmm. and all the members have an equal right over the open common areas. Right. Wherein thereafter he can make an application for an open car parking space. Correct? Hmm. Second issue is as regards the maintenance is concerned because the society is not formed. He is asking money in advance. That is okay. Hmm. Third is about the corporation tax, the property tax, which has to be borne by all the flat owners. So it is not that the builder is asking something extra, extra from him. He can only just find out whether the builder is asking the amount which is due and payable to the corporation. So he and has whether to pay his that share money. is coming to what the builder is demanding. And then he has to pay up. Right. So, Mangesh, that's your answer. There, there you've essentially signed away your rights to that car parking. If you still want a parking, then you need to apply. You need to speak to the society once the society is formed. And as far as the corporation taxes and the maintenance corpus is concerned, that is something every builder does collect from the society. You just need to check that you're actually paying what you're supposed to be paying and you're not ending up paying extra money, right? Uh, let's move on. We have another question that's coming on email. K.V. Venkatesh Murthy has written in from Bangalore. He says that his father died in 1996 without leaving a will. His mother, elder sister and he himself are legal heirs and they executed a partition deed for the property in 2012. Now the deed grants him rights to the ground floor. It mentions 50-50 shares in land but is unclear on which area belongs to whom. Now this I understand is the land area. Correct, at the land and the building, a, I think. Yeah, he has a right to the land, but which part which of the portion? land is Correct. not very clear. Now, he wants to demolish this building and construct a new one, but his mother and his sister are objecting and they're asking for a vertical division of the property, including the land area. Right now, they run a horizontal division. Correct. So, he wants to know whether they're right in doing this. His father died in 1996, he says, and he wants to know if his sister is actually eligible for a share in his... In, in his property. father's property Correct. because of the SC ruling. Yeah. Uh, so what can he do? What no, do you basically one, one thing is very clear that since uh, Mr. Murthy's father has expired hmm. without executing a bill, hmm. right? Then whatever is the property of his father will devolve on all the legal heirs under the Succession Act, right? Hmm. So the sister, the mother and himself will be the uh, owners of one third of the father's overall property. Right. So here he is better off because it is a partition deed of 50 50. Hmm. So hmm. he is getting much more than one he third. Actually is, uh, he should be getting 33. Be getting, right. Instead of that, he is getting 50 percent. And yes, if there is a partition and if it is a partition which you have agreed to, then whether it is a land, whether it is a building, then it has to be partitioned amongst the legal heirs so that in future also there is, there is no issues. Who wants to sell his own share to a third party? Nee, does it really matter whether you have divided the part, uh, property vertically or horizontally? Is that really an issue? No, issue here is, I think what I've understood from the mail is that he wants to demolish that building. Right. Right. So there is a structure standing on the plot of land. Hmm. He wants to demolish that and he wants to construct a new building. New building. Now when he's planning to demolish, then the sister and the mother are coming forward and saying that we want to divide the plot of land also. Right. So that you take your share, I take my share and construct whatever I want to construct on that plot of land. So they are well within their rights to ask that? They, they are absolutely within their rights to ask for because they are the legal heirs having absolute right over that land and the structure. Right. Also, Hemang, uh, the point that he raised about uh, the SE ruling in 2005 which grants daughters equal right to their father's property. Yeah. Now, is this... Uh, applicable retrospectively. I'm asking this for all the viewers who are no, tuning in. He is in. talking about the HUF property. Hmm. This is not the case of an HUF property. This is a case of an individual who has expired without making a will. Right. So his part of the property will devolve in the legal heirs as one third, one third. Hmm. But had it been an HUF property, right, then this issue whichever he's raising is that have the daughters having right and now they've been given the right and all that, that comes in an HUF property, right, right. not in an individual property. No, but even where the HUF property is concerned, uh, how is this law really applicable? Is it, ap the ruling, is it applicable? Correct, it is applicable today, the daughters are having their uh, right in the HUF properties and even ancestral properties. So this is even in properties uh, that were willed before 2005? Correct, this, this, they have a right in those properties. 
Okay, so uh, Venkatesh, that's your answer there. You actually, your sister and your mother are not really wrong in asking uh, for whatever they are asking you for their poor, for their rights to the property because they are well within their rights to do so. And uh, you actually are getting a good deal over here because you're getting 50% share when you're actually eligible only for 33% share of that property. And as far as that SC ruling that you raised. That is not applicable to you. We are talking about individual property here. But a key takeaway for our viewers, even if it is HUF property, you and you are a daughter and your father has left you left property as part of the HUF, as the Hindu joint united family, you have equal right to that property. Doesn't matter when that property was willed. Though the SC ruling actually came out in 2005, if it was willed before 2005, you still have a right to that. Okay, let's move on. We have a, a caller on the line. Uh, Jayesh? Uh, yeah, Jayesh. I'm there. I'm there. Hi. Uh, tell us what's your question. Okay. My question is uh, basically uh, the uh, there is a soft launching which was done by Rona Group in Thane Gorbanda Road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in the month of August, basically. So it's a it's a soft it's a soft launching process by Rona Group. The project name is Rona Bliss. Okay. Okay. The uh, rate which they have quoted is uh, right now is uh, the area is 660 square feet. Mm -hmm. and all inclusive they have quoted is 47. Uh, somewhere around 40 lakhs. Okay. 48 lakhs. 48. Right. Go on. Go on. Jayesh. Okay. At Thane, at Thane Godwin Road. I mm -hmm. would like to know. Uh, my query is uh, how about the builder which is Rona Group? How about the group is? And, uh, should I invest in uh, the property? Okay, it's a it's, pre a it's a soft launching. It's a soft launching. The position will be around 2018 and December 2018. Right, Jesh, uh, Before I could uh, bring Hemang in, uh, have you on your own done any kind of research on this property, as in in terms of approvals, etc.? Sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm asking you if you have done any research on your own. If you have tried to find out if the property has got the requisite approvals. Uh, the uh, India, the, uh, the uh, brokers like Realist, uh, the, uh, India Homes and the other brokers are promoting this project basically in the nearby location. And what they have told is uh, all the approvals are in place. Okay. Hemang, uh, what would you say? Should he invest in this property? Jayesh, my advice would be that uh, before putting your hard-earned money into this, because promises are given by the builders left, right and center. Right? So, please check up with the competent authority whether the IOD's requirements have been fulfilled by the builder or not. Commencement certificate has been given to the builder or not. Kindly check up the approved and sanctioned plans. Kindly see whether the complete TDR has been loaded on that project or not. Fourth thing is kindly find out if there is any litigation which is going on against the builder. and. The fifth and the most important is the title search. Kindly be very clear whether the title is clear. There is no encumbrance on the title of the plot on which the construction is to take place. And also verify whether the same builders, other projects are being given possession as per the promise. Now, Hemang, a lot of these things that you're talking about, I mean, these are common sense things that you check for the IOD, the CC, the OC, and, yes. uh, not the OC in this case, but the IOD and the CC at least. But uh, how can a lay customer like Jayesh, who's, you know, probably looking to invest in property, how can he get hold of all these approvals? See, it is very easy because under the Right to Information Act, hmm. you have to have the little patience for 30 days, hmm. right? So you have to just go to the competent authority and list all your questions pertaining to IOD, CCs and all those things and give it to them. Simultaneously, you can give it to the collector's place where the land is registered. Right. Right. And the third is the Google search by which you will come to know about the builder, about the litigations going on, newspaper articles which must have been flashed in the past pertaining to this builder. Mm -hmm. And you can get a lot of information on that count. Right. right. You can also know which are the other projects which are going on, if there has been delay on other projects. This is all 
Google. So essentially, Jayesh, there is no shortcut to research. You, the, it, this is a huge investment that you're doing. Uh, so you might as well just, you know, uh, go the extra mile and do your research right now uh, rather than repent, repent later. And in fact, uh, like uh, Hemang said, there are tools available. Use RTI, use the internet, speak to people who bought into the property earlier, bought into Rona Group's properties earlier, and there you will have your due diligence on the builder, right? So go ahead, do that research. If you have issues, come back to us and we'll help you. Okay, okay. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much you for calling in. Uh, we have a caller on the show. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Khandelwal has called in. Hello? Yeah, hello. Yes, Mr. Khandelwal, tell us yeah. what's your question. Uh, see, we have a, a high-rise building. Mm -hmm. Basement plus ground floor plus nine story. Mm -hmm. The building, the plan has been sanctioned by the municipal corporation. Right. But the basement, actually the basement has been sanctioned, but not for the shops. The shops have been constructed and occupied by the unauthorized person. Okay. And these people, they have become the member of the society hmm. and acquired the share certificate. However, however, actually, they don't have the occupancy certificate. And this portion is also not included in the plan sanctioned by the corporation. Okay. Now, we, we the legal member, are facing a lot of problems because since they have the majority, mm -hmm. they have a full control over the society. So, but they are just like a... Uh, it is a sort of unlawful assembly of the people controlling the legal persons. Right. And we have actually informed to the registrar put up the matter for seizing of the share certificate of these people, but the register is not taking any action. And the inquiry they have had, mm -hmm. they have asked for submission of the this uh, occupancy certificate, but that they have not sub submitted, okay. and no action is being taken by the register. So you so need to, to do know what can you do, right? Right, Mr. Khandelwal, yeah. where are you calling from? Uh, where is this society Thane. based? Thane. Thane. Okay, so it's a society based in Thane, but if you don't, if it is unauthorized, can you get share certificates? See, what has happened in his case is that there has been construction hmm. and there is a basement. Right. Right? So the approved and sanctioned plan shows that portion as a basement. Hmm. The builder has illegally and unlawfully thereafter constructed shops. Hmm entered into agreement with these shop owners okay and these shop owners thereafter upon the formation of the society handed over those agreements to the society which was formed okay right so under the maharashtra cooperative societies act 1960 if any shop owner hands over an agreement to the society hmm. okay because once the builder uh, moves out and the society comes in, you can't hold the builder, the builder gives a list of the people whom he has sold. Mm -hmm. Correct? So in that list would be the names of all these shop, shop owners. Keepers. To support that, there are agreements between the shop owners and the builder. So under the Maharashtra Cooperative of Societies Act, whether the building has an OC or not, membership cannot be stopped. Right. So the registrar or the society, whoever has given the membership, Right, cannot now take away those membership. Okay. Correct. How to deal with this problem is not lying with the registrar. Right. Okay. He has to basically approach the municipal corporation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Under the RTI, he has to call for the approved and sanctioned plan. Plan. Okay. And he has to follow up with the corporation that these shops which are being constructed in a basement are illegal and bad in law. Correct. And it needs to be demolished. For all you know, there could be a fire hazard. There, there could be, be, definitely. Because there is, it means that the builder has illegally given the whole basement, hmm. which has got converted all of a sudden into a shop line. Shop line, exactly. 30 to 50 shops coming right under your uh, building, which to absolutely illegal and unauthorized, it means those fire lines or other uh, hmm. systems are not in place. Hmm. So you have to uh, follow up, sir, with the BMC. If the BMC is not taking any step, please approach the Honorable High Court under a writ of mandamus and make corporation a party 
with a prayer that in spite of the corporations being informed about this illegal unlawful construction right the corporation is not taking any steps right so essentially mr khandelwal you've been approaching the wrong authority in this regard you need to go to the thane municipal corporation and they are the ones who can help you um, like uh, hemang said use rti uh, and one, one more thing one, one more thing sir mr khandelwal one one more thing this is as regards what you can do with the bmc is concerned hmm. with uh -huh. the registrar you can approach the registrar under section 17 of the maharashtra cooperative societies act 1960 which uh -huh. permits you uh -huh. to have a di a di uh -huh. uh, diversion or bifurcation of the society so what happens is the so the shop owners will become one society uh -huh. and the flat owners will become another society i see under section 18 the registrar has the power Uh -huh. to declare two separate societies in the same building but hema would you really uh, would you actually recommend that because then if there are two societies the problems would just multiply no because what happens is that there are many uh, buildings in bombay which has a, uh, uh, a shop line hmm. okay uh, and they have a separate and, society uh, and the uh, building uh, with flat owners right correct they have their different entrances these people have different entrances so both can manage their uh, show independently Okay. Right. Okay. So yeah, in this case, right. Mr. Because right. for the Mr. common area, for the common area, there will be problem to share by both the people. No, when there is bifurcation of the society. Right, Mr. Khandelwal, when you actually get to that, that's a bridge that you have to cross when you actually get down to discussing that. We can't really deal with that in detail right now. I'm told there's another caller waiting, but uh, essentially what uh, Hemang is telling you is one that you're approaching the wrong authority. You need to go to the TMC, use RTI. go to the high court if you're not getting relief from the tmc uh, for uh, you know getting rid of these unauthorized shops or the other thing that you could do is uh, join hands with them let them make their own society you make your own society and both of you all can coexist right uh, so go ahead look at both issue uh, look at both the options and if you have any problems do get back to us okay thank you very much uh, let's move on i'm told we have another uh, a uh, question we've got a question coming in uh, on email now arvind pande has written in he says that he's applied for a commercial property in gurgaon in september 2012 uh, by vigneshwara developers in sector 74 it park he's deposited 13.75 lakh rupees with them this project assured 13 percent assured returns he gave checks from september 2012 to march 2015 so he's essentially done his payments and after which a case of service tax evasion has been registered against this company people from the developers office were arrested he went to the consumer forum but it wouldn't help because it's a commercial property now how can he recover the money they uh, have not started construction i be mr pandey i don't know why the uh, consumer forum has not entertained his complaint because see as long as you are an individual who has invested into a commercial property and if finally you are looking out for earning for your self earning out of that commercial property you come under the definition of a consumer and if if at all you have made an complaint with the consumer forum and they have not entertained please go into an appeal because that is a right forum in which you will get reliefs as long as you establish that yeah. the commercial property which you have taken is from your own funds a right. and secondly that you wish to self on out of by doing some business or uh, using right. the office so essentially you own. need to you need to go back to the consumer forum go into appeal and tell them that you are the ones who have to look into this issue and because, get a get a good lawyer because the agreement itself allows him 13% annual returns right you have an agreement in hand so you should get relief over there uh, i'm afraid we will have to uh, end over here because we are rapidly running out of time it's a wrap with that on today's show property hotline but we'll be back tomorrow to answer all your queries related to tax issues while buying selling or investing in property hemang thanks a lot for joining us wonderful to have you on the show thank you very much thank you thank you for joining us and keep watching magic bricks now